today I am also deep into my art. I've been doing an artist residency in this studio since April and when I'm creating I find myself thinking a lot about what makes a good piece of art and coincidentally I was checking out one of the studio spaces here and saw that there was a library full of nothing but art books and one of those art books this one claims to know what art is and what it isn't. The book is called What is Art? by Leo Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy is probably a name you've heard of before. He was a very famous Russian author who is best known for writing War and Peace and Anna Karenina in the latter half of the 1800s. But what you might not know about Leo Tolstoy is that he also wrote a lot of non-fiction essays, uh, often dealing with spirituality, Christianity, and his type of morality, and he actually accumulated quite the devoted following by the end of his life. In this book, Tolstoy applies his very specific brand of Christian fundamentalism to the art that he sees around him. He basically warns people that society is in the middle of degrading. Uh, the virtues and the morality and the spirituality are all being worn away by modernism, and art is being worn away right along with it. And he basically says that if we correct the culture, if we correct art, then that will correct the moral deficiency of his current society. So right away you're kind of like, hmm, this sounds kind of, you know, gatekeepy, but he, he starts off very well. Like he talks about how art is no longer for the common man. All the art that he sees is basically made to make rich people feel comfortable or sophisticated, and that art should strive to be universal, that it should draw in people from all walks of life and all cultures and classes, and it should speak to them emotionally and spiritually, and so in those terms I agree with him. Like, I, I'm not so much a person who uses should when it comes to like what art is, but I do agree that like it's important that everyone can feel they can participate in art. I also agree with a lot of his assessments with elitism and classism. So it sounds like he isn't going to be elitist, which is good, but then as he talks a little more, you start to see that he is quite an elitist himself. Uh, and he has a lot of contradictions and issues that just stack and stack until there are more holes in his argumentation than Swiss cheese. He starts off by talking about how, oh, all these art critics, if we took out all the art that they don't like, then soon enough we wouldn't have any art at all. And he doesn't seem to account for the fact that art is subjective and people can have different tastes. Um, and keep a pin in that thing he said about worrying about running out of art, because we will circle back to that. Things just sort of get worse as the book goes on. It quickly becomes clear, despite Tolstoy saying that he's all for love and brotherhood and kinship, that he is a Christian supremacist. And I, it's like, I'm fine with religious arguments in books, I understand not everyone's an atheist or whatever, but he's using his religion in a very divisive way. He basically says all of society should be progressing all the time. And he says that religion is the vehicle of progress. He says that since Christianity, according to him, is the most recent development in religion, it's the best way of thinking and it's the best way of being. Any religion that came before, like Judaism or paganism or what have you, those people are just thinking on a lower level. Uh, so he wants to bring everybody up to thinking like a Christian. Uh, and of course he completely ignores that there has been a lot of religious development since Christianity. Like, he never brings up Islam once, and he can't even wrap his mind around the fact that some people are secular or atheists. So he's literally being holier than thou, and yet he has the gall to call other people exclusionary or elitist. So the hypocrisy is very clear. Well, you're probably thinking, wait a second, why is Tolstoy hammering in this Christian artwork thing? Didn't he just say that he wanted artwork that was universally relatable and understandable? Uh, well, yes, conveniently, he says that uh, the Bible and Christianity are just universally understood things. He's just like, oh yeah, just ignore all the wars that were fought over differing interpretations of the Bible. It's, everyone interprets it the same way, and he has a convenient out for anyone who doesn't relate to uh, biblical teaching. He just says, oh, it's because you're sick in the head, you're perverse, you're corrupt, and 
it's ridiculous that he is so, like, pig-headed about it, because just a second ago, he was complaining about how these elitist artists are always, like, looking down their nose at the peons who don't understand their work. Yet here he is, basically condemning people on a moral and spiritual level if they don't understand the work that he likes. Uh, the hypocrisy doesn't stop there. He, like, he says that he enjoys artwork that is not religious, which, okay, fine. Um, he talks about, like, wanting artwork that depicts the peasant class or shares true raw emotions, but he acts like there's no art that's doing that in his time. Even though he would have just lived through the rise of realist painting, which does exactly what he's saying. But Tolstoy doesn't just stop at being a hypocrite. He goes beyond that and demonstrates a huge ignorance for how art is made and all that stuff. Like, he says he's, he took 15 years to research this, but I, I don't know what he was spending his time doing. Because, like, he, he, he rants about any artist who uses nudity in their painting at all, right? But he seems to not understand that learning to draw the nude figure is instrumental in the development of any artist who wants to do portraiture or figurative art or anything like that. And I know you could say, well, look, he, he's probably an advocate for artists who are outside of the academy who aren't doing all that formal training and drawing <laughs> nude figures. And I totally agree. I'm a huge proponent for outsider art. And Tolstoy says that he's for that kind of thinking. But every time he's confronted with art that's outside the academy or from somebody from a lower class, he shits all over it every time. Like, at one point he even goes so far as to quote from an art snob who's visiting a post-impressionist exhibition. And, he, like, he just says, oh, it's ugly, none of these artists know how to paint people, they're all over the place. And so suddenly he's, Tolstoy is on the side of the art snobs because he doesn't like this outside art stuff but he doesn't like the Academy painting either. So, which is it? Tolstoy is also insultingly ignorant about the economic status of artists. He characterizes all artists, basically, as being these very rich, smug elites that only move around in these social bubbles where they only meet other rich people and they don't understand anything anymore, they don't understand the struggles of the common man. And I, I have to wonder what artists Tolstoy is looking at because a lot of artists of his time were struggling, they were poor, they were starving, they mingled with poor people and they depicted their struggles. I think what happened is that Tolstoy, Tolstoy is basically an aristocrat, so the only art he's probably seeing is the really decadent Rococo style painting that the elites of his time were so enamored with. And so he, he just writes off the rest and assumes, oh yeah, all these artists are just these rich people. <laughs> so he's retained a lot of that arist aristocratic ignorance and arrogance, in my opinion. As Tolstoy continues to write, his, he starts to change and turn against the majority. So for the whole essay, he's basically been on the majority side, but then he starts to acknowledge that people are changing their mind about Impressionist painting, and they're starting to come around, and the majority of people are liking it. But suddenly he hates that. He's just like, oh no, that's because they're all brainwashed. That's because they've been corrupted by this society that's degrading. They can't possibly like it because of their own agency or anything. Another thing that Tolstoy decides that shouldn't be in art at all is symbolism and metaphor. And he basically says that if you put too much symbolism in an artwork, then It'll be exclusionary because then a bunch of people won't understand it. Okay, fair enough. But he doesn't seem to understand that every culture has its own set of codes and symbols. And an outsider might not understand that. Like, take his own religion, for example. Like, Christianity is inundated with symbols that a Shintoist might not understand. Uh, Jesus Christ himself talks in parables and metaphors almost exclusively throughout the Bible. But nope, he, 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 can't, um, he can't step outside of his own experience and understand that symbolism is in everything. Uh, and the reason that art is, has so much variety is because all these people who are making art come from different walks of life. They have different experiences. And if you don't understand a piece of art, then you can make the stretch to learn about the art, to learn about the artist. And that's what brings people together, like sharing different experiences. And 
talking about them and expressing them in creative ways. It's just so weird that he just throws out the baby with the bathwater over and over again throughout this book. As Tolstoy continues to rave on and on, you start to realize that his stated intentions at the beginning are completely different from his actual intentions. Like, he started off by talking about how he wants art for everybody. He wants art that's universal, that can bring everybody in from all walks of life. But as you read, you realize that what he actually wants to do is to narrow the scope of art. He wants to narrow who can express art, he, he wants to narrow what can be expressed, how it can be expressed, and even what kind of art should be considered art. Like, most of the stuff that he's railing against, he says it's not even art at all, let alone that it's bad art. And at one point, he actually advocates for destroying art and writing and music that he doesn't like. I'm going to find the quote right here. He says, Not only should no sacrifices be offered to that which is recognized as art among us, but on the contrary, all the efforts of people who wish to live a good life should be directed towards destroying this art, because it is one of the cruelest evils oppressing our mankind. So, he's starting to sound a little bit fascistic. He's literally just like, this, this art that I don't like, it's evil. It's destroying society. And if we don't want to be destroyed, we have to destroy the art. Like, <laughs> remember when I said earlier to keep in mind that thing about how he worried that no art will be left after the critics are done with it? What the hell is he doing with this book? <laughs> For Tolstoy, it's my way or the highway. I don't care. Uh, he says he wants art that's for the common man and that everyone can understand, but only if it fits his specifications. Everything else can just be destroyed or thrown away or nobody should look at it, nobody should care about it. <laughs> he blames all of society's ills on its pet peeves and he's very pig-headed and very narrow-minded. Very much running counter to what he says he's for repeatedly in this book. He's a hypocrite and he doesn't know how to, <laughs> how to frame an argument at all. But anyway, at the end of the day, I give What is Art a 4 out of 10. It's a good hate read, I'll say that much. Like, I was arguing with this book the whole time. Like, I was arguing out loud, yelling at it, like Tolstoy was in the room with me. So, if you're interested in learning about the guy behind Anna Karenina or War and Peace, check this out because this book is a trip. Um, but anyway, that is my review. I will eventually still read Anna Karenina. I haven't read any other Tolstoy aside from this, but I haven't given up on him yet, so I will maybe be reviewing Anna Karenina sometime this year or next. So anyway, thanks for sticking around to watch me yell at a book that nobody has fucking read, and I hope to see you next time when I no doubt look at another book that nobody cares about but me. So I'll see you then. Bye!